will show you how to generate a mesh with fully 3D samples and how to do the cell segmentation using CNN, which stands for Convolutional Neural Network. The sample that we will use is Strauss 2021 Arabidopsis root, and we can open it going to stack one, open, desktop, Strauss 2021, root three analyzed, stacks, and you can select the zero H sample, which is T0. And here it is. We can decrease the opacity. And so with confocal stacks of good quality, it's possible to fully segment cells in 3D. And the best results can be achieved with very dense stacks, so a fine Z stack when acquiring images with a confocal microscope, and also a small pinhole diameter. So since it's quite difficult to seed in 3D, Morphographics uses an auto-seeded watershed from the C++ library called the Insight Toolkit ITK. So first of all, we have to blur the stack to reduce the noise, and we can run the process stack, filters, Gaussian blur stack, and you should use a radius slightly larger than the width of the cell walls in this sample. And you should try something like one micrometer. After this is done, you can go to multi-stack and copy work to main stack because then you will need it for the further steps and then you can uh, switch back to work and since 3D segmentation is quite difficult Morphographics uses a CNN add-on that can be used to process stacks and recognize structure by, by using convolutional neural network deep learning tools and this can greatly improve the segmentation results Remember that this add-on requires CUDA and it can be downloaded on morphographics.org slash software. And so we can select CNN here and UNet 3D prediction. And we can run the process. So these are three different PyTorch files. This file was trained from the Stegmaier lab based on the Willis et al. 2016 dataset from the Jonsson uh, lab. This Vijayan UNet was trained based on the data from Vijayan et al. 2021 from the Schneitz lab. While the Basel combined UNet, it is based on both Willis and Vijayan datasets combined, and this was performed from the Basel lab. So we can select this one and select open. And this process will take quite some time to run. Now the process is done, we can look at the results by clipping the planes. You see the cells are quite clear. And now, and remember to save the stack as stack work save. You can call it CNN. And now you can blur again the stack we can combine the main stack and the work stack by running combine the stacks, but remember to tick also main. Okay, run. And now we can segment the cells, so we can run stack ITK segmentation ITK watershed auto seeded. And this process can take quite some time, but you do not have to do any seeding. So you can adjust the threshold, something like 3000. And if a sample is highly under segmented, so with the cells fused, then decrease the threshold. And if the sample is over segmented, so the sing single cells are segmented into multiple pieces, then the threshold needs to be increased. First save the segmented volume in the work store under stack menu as there is no undo function here.
and the segmentation fills the entire volume with labels and the sample will be buried inside so you need to remove the outside label by running delete labeling volume pressing alt and left click and now you can see your sample the auto -seed segmentation almost always requires some correction so first of all we can remove these particles here with the voxel edit here we can increase the voxel edit radius and just get rid of them okay Okay, now we have removed a lot of these extra cells. And so the auto-seeded segmentation almost always requires corrections for over-segmented cells. These multiple segments can be fused together into a single segment by using the color picker here and a bucket fill label with current one to merge the cells. So you can activate the grid. Sometimes, like here, you have several cell labels and you can merge them by clicking here and here. So you will, it will be merged here, click this this one and this one and here here, here and here we can just delete some values like you can delete some here or here You can go through the stack and check if all the cells seem to be fine. Like here is an extra cell and we can remove it. Okay, now we can save the mesh, correct it. You can open the CNN file. You can cut it through. We can see that it's all segmented. We delete a cell by mistake, like this one and this one. So we can select the box of edit and have fill and see ticked. And just press here and here and then run ITK watershed. Okay, now we remove again the background. And we see the two cells are now segmented. 
Okay. Now Now we have all the cells segmented. We can save it again. Save corrected. We can save it over. You can always spend some more time on it. Now you can extract the mesh using the process mesh creation marching cubes 3D. And the cube size parameter defines how far apart the vertices are in the mesh. For a fine detailed mesh, the cube spacing should be small, so you should try something like two for example. And the trade-off to this is a larger file size for the mesh. Okay and the cells are automatically labeled with the same values as the stack labels. And once the mesh is extracted, you can edit each cell individually using the select connected area tool here. And now this is done, we can untick the work. We can see the mesh. So we can see all the cells segmented. There are extra fragments that you see, you can easily delete them. Okay. And if you want to select a single cell, you can select this tool, select connected area, so you can see if you want to delete it or modify it. You can always play with different values for blurring and the threshold param parameter for the IT key segmentation or the CNN to check if you can nicely segment all the cells with as little manual correction possible. If you want to create some heat maps, you can go to heat map analysis cell, cell analysis 3D. This will allow you to generate heat maps and after that you can go to measures 3D and go to geometry and run something like measure the cell size in the X dimension of a 3D cell. You can see the cells that are the biggest on this X axis, they are in red. Or like the, one, the ones that are more elongated are in red here. Or the ones that, that are thicker are in Z. And you can also measure the volume of the cells.